In this video, we're going to talk about how events, event data flows into Google Analytics 4. We're going to talk about automatically collected events, the events that you get when you install the J4 configuration tag on a website. We'll talk about how events translate into metrics and dimensions. And we'll talk about creating custom events. This is one of my favorite features of GA4, how easy it is to customize it to collect the kinds of data that are most interesting to you. And I'm just going to finish with a little rant on naming conventions uh, so that when you set up your events, you do it in a way that uh, is easy to follow and um, well organized. So let's uh, have a look at an event. So this is an example of a page view event. So each event has a name and, and then parameters. And the parameters are really where a lot of the important stuff happens. These are the, the parameters associated with the page view event. This is a automatic event. This is a standard event in GA4. And it, if you add the GA4 configuration tag to a website, Unless you specify otherwise, it'll start collecting page view events. And page view events will have these parameters associated with it. So let's have a look at page view and other event data flowing into GA4. All right, so I'm in my organization's J4 account. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I've, I've opened Google Tag Assistant here. So tagassistant.google.com, you may be familiar with it if you've done troubleshooting of tags in Google Tag Manager. I've gone into Tag Assistant and I've connected it to the 2 October's website so that I can show you this view in GA4. So if we go to Admin and if we click on Debug View, since I have Tag Assistant enabled, What's happening is that as I browse the 2 October's website, it's going to show me exactly the data that's flowing into GA4. This is what I wanted to show you is like we have this page view event. The page view event has these parameters. We have video start event, video progress event. We'll talk a little bit about how those are being collected in a, in a minute. But there's a couple of parameters that I didn't show you before, but you can see like this is this is really the underlying structure of data that gets collected in GA4. Everything that gets collected is an event, and every event has parameters. I mentioned before that there are these automatically collected events, and, and these get collected as soon as you put the GA4 configuration tag on a website. I mentioned that page view is one of those. Let's, let's have a look at a few of the others. So if we go to data streams, we click on your web data stream. So here what says enhanced measurement, these are the automatically collected events uh, we can add. So there's a few more. So, so I'm going to pop this up this view uh, to see the, first of all, there's one missing, but um, in this view, I guess it's this scrolling event because I've disabled it. Uh, so each of these, as I mentioned, get automatically collected if you uh, put the J4 configuration tag, coming to this view kind of describes what these events are collecting. And something that's, that's curious about this is, like I showed you those events, and if we go back, you know, well, as you recall, like it's a page underscore view, that's the actual event. Here they're giving them sort of friendly names. Honestly, this is, <laughs> to me, this is really confusing because these friendly names don't actually, in I think all cases, most cases don't occur in, in GA4. They're just giving you friendly names of the events, but in fact, like page view is lowercase page underscore view and uh, scrolls a, a bit more complicated. Then the events that are, are getting collected, if, if we look in reporting in GA4, I'm going to show you something I find confusing. If we go to engagement here and we look at events, this actually shows us the raw events, but for the most part, these don't show up in reporting. In reporting, we generally build reports with dimensions and metrics. In this case, uh, event name 
I guess is the dimension in, an event name is a dimension in GA4, but it's a bit confusing because really most of what we're reporting on are dimen dimensions or metrics that are derived from uh, event parameters specifically. To show you kind of how event parameters translate into dimensions and metrics, let's go to um, this pages and, and, and screens report. And we'll leave this, this page path in, in place. So the page path and screen class. Now here's the page view event we were looking at before. The, the page location parameter in the page view event actually that gets translated into a few different dimensions, one of them being this page path and screen class. There's a refer dimension that comes from page refer. There's a so title dimension that comes from page title. In this case, most of these parameters become dimensions. There, if we look, so this engagement time in milliseconds, that gets used for various different metrics. In this example here, for example, average engagement time gets calculated using this parameter. So when the parameter gets sent to GA4, it's got a millisecond value for the amount of, of engagement time on a page. And Google looks at sort of the summation of those events to calculate how long a user is engaged on a page. Uh, also uses that value uh, to calculate a uh, average engagement time per session. So each one of these parameters either gets used directly, uh, like in the case of page refer, that fairly directly translates into a refer dimension, or in many cases, dimensions or metrics are calculated from the parameter that's uh, sent with the event. So those are standard events. Now, let's have a look at creating a custom custom event in GA4. So now let's go to, I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can add your own events to GA4. I'm going to, the, the first way is kind of the simpler way. I'm going to come here into events, so admin events. You see a couple of these submission events. So these are forms on my website and I'm tracking specific form submission events versus just a generic form submission event. There is actually this form submit event. So how, how did I do that? Well, if you come up here and you click create event, you'll see, so here's each of the form submit events I, I set up. So this contact us submission, and, and I can actually create new ones here. So this is how I would do it if I were creating a new one. But from here, so, I said event name equals form submit, and then the page location starts with toactobers.com slash contact. So I'm just taking a standard form submit event, and when that form submit happens on the contact page, I'm calling it contact us submission. Now you may wonder, well, you've got you've already got this form submit event, but you know, I want to know the different types of forms that are being submitted on the website. So uh, here I can see sort of contact us, there's a careers page, there's an apprenticeship, we have a digital marketing apprenticeship, so when somebody submits a form on that page. Um, and I mean, the other thing about that is that any event can be flagged as a conversion. So these, some of these form submit events I'm counting as conversions, but I don't actually want all form submit events to count as conversions. So that's one way. If you can come to the events page, you can create events from existing variables related to events. So you're just saying any parameter associated with an event, you can take and you can essentially create your own um, new event. So I don't know, let's say you had a uh, login event and you wanted to create um, you're a school and you have faculty and student logins. Well, maybe you want to create a student login and a faculty login. And so if you were setting that up as your own event, then you'd create an event and you give it parameter and maybe you'd say login type as your parameter. And then you could use those to create different events in here.
So the, that example is not actually an automatic event. Let's look at how we add completely custom events to GA4, not just relying on existing events and existing event parameters. The, the scroll event, I'm gonna use this one as an example. Now, even though the scroll event is an automatic event, the automatic event only tracks 90% scrolls. Uh, it's meaning that when a user scrolls 90% down a page, it tracks a scroll. I prefer to track when people scroll partway down the page, like actually 25, 50, 75, 100%. Um, I'll pop up a link if you're interested in, in, in seeing how to set this up in more detail. I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough of an example, but I did record a video that goes through in detail how to set up your own custom scroll event. But I'm going to show you the, the uh, just do a quick walkthrough of the one that I created. Now I'm, I've moved over to Tag Manager. This is the easiest place to add your own custom events. Uh, you could do it by placing code directly on the website, but I strongly recommend doing it via Tag Manager. So I'm going to go to Tags and we'll go down to GA4. We've got this scroll event. So what I've done here is I've got the event name scroll that matches the event name in GA4. The, I've added a, a parameter percent scrolled and this scroll depth threshold is a built-in variable in Tag Manager. So and that's going to that's going to fire when, so in my case, I've set the trigger to fire when a person scrolls 25, 50, 75, 100% down the page. And that's what this uh, setting, this built-in variable value, like that's the value of percent scrolled. So that's, that's what I'm going to get is I'll get, I'll be able to report on those scroll percentages. And then the scroll count here, I'll show you in a second what that does. So what I really want to do is every time a person scrolls, I want it to count as um, as a scrolls metric. This is not a lesson about Tag Manager, super powerful. I'll, I'll, I'll do another video that goes into detail, creating your own custom event. But let's just have a look at how I then grab the values from this event in GA4. Uh, so if we go to custom definitions, so we've got this percent scroll that I've mapped to uh, the percent scrolled uh, parameter. So again, you know, parameters, some, in, in the case, when you add your own custom definitions of dimensions or metrics, you can't do fancy math the way that Google does, like with some of their engagement metrics and stuff, where the metric is actually calculated based on some combination of maybe page views and engagement time or that sort of thing to calculate for average engagement time per session or something like that. So in the Kate way, if we do our own custom definitions, we really only have the ability to say, if we look at this. So it's all I'm doing is I'm just saying, grab the value from this event parameter and give pass that value to the dimension percent scroll. The, the metric uh, that, so if we look at this metric here, Scrolls is what I named the metric. This is not um, something that's built into GA4. And that just grabs that scroll count. So if you recall in Tag Manager, the scroll count was set to one. Every time a scroll event happens, it's gonna have a value of one. The sum of those is the number of times that scrolls are tracked as, as users go through the website. That's fast walkthrough, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll record a, a full video of creating custom events, but you give a feeling now when you're tracking these events, how they become standard dimensions or metrics that you can report on in GA4. Just as a, as a quick reminder, uh, even if you don't create a custom dimension or, or metric, you can in many reports in GA4, I can come here and I can see like the specific events here, if I'm just interested in that, and I don't actually want to create a, a custom dimension or metric. Um, I mentioned before how some of those form events were conversions, and you'll see here. So the ones that are flagged as conversions show up here. And to wrap things up, let's have a look at naming conventions. In closing, a little bit about naming conventions. I'll try not to make this a rant. I feel pretty strongly about naming conventions. Uh, so first of all, event names and parameter names, there are certain rules you have to follow. 
you can't have an event an event name begin with anything other than a letter. Uh, you can use letters, numbers, and underscores in event names. You can't have spaces or other characters. The convention is to do lowercase word separated by underscores, which is called snake case. And you can get it with the, the examples below. Some of them have spaces, those, those you can't do. Uh, but some of them have capitals too. And the, I guess the thing that I would say is, yes, you can get away with that. Google's convention is snake case. And you're going to, it'll be much easier to tell what you're working with just to make your own life easier and other people's. And I mean, honestly, my peeve is just that it looks kind of hinky when you see a bunch of different formats of event and parameter names. Similarly, with dimensions and metrics, Google's convention is to capitalize the first word and then use spaces, not underscores. And I have seen people set up GA4 and uh, I guess it's just because they're stuck in the convention of events. They start using underscores. That's going to show up in reporting and there's no reason for it. So it'll look better, be easier to read. I don't know why Google has settled on only capitalizing the first letter of the first word, but they have. So to be consistent with Google's built-in dimensions and metrics, I recommend that you do the same thing. That's all. Thanks for watching. Thank you.